Hey everyone, happy Friday. It is the end of the week. It of course would be a much happier Friday if the Flyers were able to pull off their win against those Boston Bruins. But hey, we were still able to get one point out of it. Got seven out of the total ten points we could get so far at three, one, and one out of the uh, five games we have so far. So that's a good, solid way to start, especially when we all have, and rightfully so, questions pertaining to all the shots we've allowed. Some defensive breakdown. Uh, not being aggressive in certain parts of the game that even AV has hinted on. Um, those are big, big things you're going to want to fix as time goes on, but I look to look at it as a positive turn where we're 3-1-1 one, one to start despite all of that and despite having three big injuries. You've had Couturier get injured, of course. Then Frost, who came in from him and looked pretty good, a great offensive skill player, looked really good in the second game before he got injured and looked good, was one of the best skaters in our terrible defeat. Um, was a guy that was definitely going to make his mark, in my opinion, and then unfortunately got injured right away. Myers is out now, at least for a week-to-week -week basis. So those are big losses that this team's got to adjust from. And then last night, Friedman went out early on that play by Marshan when they got tangled up at the blue line, and he threw him down, and they said that was for precautionary reasons. So hopefully he's back in tomorrow. He's a good, simple as simple as can be, like the country song says, uh, type of uh, defenseman there. So having him back in the lineup will definitely help to help simplify things. And I think having Mark Friedman in, I'm hoping also just the way he plays the game from the mentality might help guys like Gus and other people just to realize simplify it and play your game. Because Gustafsson obviously has been doing good in the offensive zone, helping the second power play and so on and so forth. And that chip pass he had the previous game to Hayes, not last game, the game before. But that that is all fine and dandy. We would also need him to step up a little bit more in the other zone. But you know you're going to take the good and the bad with Gustafsson. I know that coming in. It's just... Usually, even, especially his 60-point is really good season in Chicago, you wouldn't see as much struggle bunnying as he is a little bit now in the zone, but I think it could be there's no preseason. He's trying to learn his new D partners and so on and so forth. So I think that will likely get better. But last night, uh, we got off to a good start despite being outshot. Um, the Flyers, again, allowed 40 shots. A 43 shots to only 26. So this is a weird game to look at. When we were up 2 nothing. Did we actually deserve to be up 2-0? Um, and was it a game that we blew the lead, or was it a game that the Bruins actually played better and then just ended up coming back like the stat sheets showed that they probably should have? This is why this game is weird to look at. I look at it as we should have still not blown a 2-1 lead in any circumstance because even though you were getting outshot, you kind of pulled a Dallas Stars playoff-esque thing where you were just able to score with the shots you got and were able to capitalize via that. And for some reason, unlike the Sharks, at times were able to kind of just hone it in and D it up. The Flyers were, well, not for some reason, but the injuries we mentioned, but the Flyers were not able to do that same thing. Once they got the lead, they were letting the Bruins still run rough shot a bit. Jack Stunica, who's obviously, when a guy scores his first career goal, that's a big momentum booster for the team, was able to pot his first career goal. Then Charlie Coyle bounced back with the game-tying goal. And then you had a nice goal by Sanheim when he was able to tip one in front when uh, Voracek shot one from the blue line there. That was a pretty nice play. That looked like originally it just went in from Jay, and you were wondering how Rast didn't see it, and then you realized that it was not that easy of a play for Tuka Rast after it deflected off of Travis Sanheim's stick. And then Nick Ritchie. Uh, Nick Ritchie, puck luck. Uh, the puck was fine in the Bruins, as JJ said. It went to him, and he was able to slam it home in front of the net. And then Brandon Carlo, who only has, I believe, 13 goals in his entire career, was able to fire a absolutely ridiculous laser of a slap shot into the corner of the net that hard had no chance of saving. And that made it 4-3 to three until uh, Reamer again had a key goal that was able to tie it up in front of the net. And that's a shout-out. we got to shout-out James Van Reems. Like, he's been playing like a bat out of hell this year. He's been playing really good. He's been probably the best skater, potentially, on the team thus far. And uh, th that's something that needs to be uh, talked about and needs to be shouted out. I mean, JVR has been a very good player this year, been good on the four chip, been more physical this year, been great net front presence, and has been looking like the JVR when he first came back and the JVR more of old than uh, what he did last year. And I think that's going to be huge for this team going forward. Uh, in a losing effort, even though... Uh, he allowed in four goals and then the extra shootout goal. Uh, I believe Carter Hart still played well. Again, we have gaps in our defense. We're still trying to learn how to help our guy out himself. And I think he played a pretty good game. 
He just allowed a few goals uh, here and there. The one he would obviously probably want to have back that went through his uh, legs there, the Charlie Coyle goal. But I think um, I think overall Carter Hart played well, in my opinion, though. He played well again. The only game you could say he had an off night was the game against Buffalo. Other than that, it's been more breaks in our system that have led to a goal on Carter Hart, and I can't blame that on Carter Hart if there's breaks in our system that lead to a goal on Carter Hart. I got to blame that on, obviously, just the way that guys are currently uh, playing as the time is right now. But I think the Flyers are going to bounce back. They played a game that was very odd. They were able to take the lead, but probably shouldn't have had the lead statistically uh, when you looked at the stat sheet from just how they were playing. And then they were not able to defend that lead. The Bruins came back. The Bruins had us by the numbers for the most part the entire game. So it was a very, very odd game. But the Flyers were still able to get a point out of it. They were able to prevail with a point. So like Guy said in the post game, you're probably a mix of both. Grateful you were able to get a point and disappointed that you weren't able to hold the lead. But we were able to get a point. I looked to look it over the glass half full. Uh, after 10 games, we have 7 points. The same plus 3 differential according to NHL.com as the New York Islanders in the Mass Mutual East Division. And we're in first place right now because of that overtime. So that overtime was groovy and really helped us to give us the 7 points. So right now our Flyers are start the season are still in first place despite the differences that we know need to be adjusted uh, as the time goes on. All fans know need to be fixed and adjusted and fine-tuned. But that will happen and I believe it will happen soon and this team's going to continue to grow and continue to get better from the 3-1-1 on one record to start the season starting with a win and a bounce back win against the bees tomorrow to split this series so have a great safe and pleasant day everyone this has been sports fanatic news i'm joe borg this has been the reaction to the flyers and bruins peace out everybody